Let's begin with the, the posture and position. You brought up a lot of good points that maybe some of our listeners who are not in our methodology are not as familiar with. Yep. And the, the posture and position in the concept where a, a standard bestowed upon athletes from above, whether you're power lifting or crossfitting, was hip crease below parallel. Now we get into this idea of posture and position because our training is a means to an end yep. versus the movement as the end in a sport like powerlifting and CrossFit. Yeah, so where this came from, um, 1999 fucking seems like eons ago, I ruptured my patellar tendon and I spent the entire year on IR. Um, you know, being a young kid that lived in Philadelphia, no friends, no family, everybody was playing football that I knew. And here I am stitched up, injured, and, you know, other than rehabbing and lifting weights at some weird gym on, on Walnut Street, uh, I really didn't have anything. So I watched film and I would just, you know, a couple hours a day sit in the film room when everybody was gone and watch all this film. And I became obsessed with the idea of why people won and lost. So as an offensive lineman, what could I do to guarantee victory? And I realized through just fucking a lot of film watching. And I know when people be like, oh yeah, this makes sense, but it's not necessarily uh, apparent to a lot of people. The individual that was able to maintain his posture and position or his technique or, or his good movement longer than the other guy usually won every time. So if I'm an offensive lineman, the defensive lineman's job is to get me into a bad position by either lifting me up, moving me, bull rushing me, and all the moves that the defensive lineman are using are about getting me out of good position. So my thing that I coined was as I move through space, the longer I can maintain my posture and position as it relates to the individual and force him out of his good posture and position, then I can guarantee victory. So when I came back and started 16 games that next year, my entire goal was to move through space from point A to point B, whatever I had to do, and to maintain my good technique, my knee bend, my posture, my position, longer regardless of what he did to me than that individual and if I could do that I could win and it was usually 100% victory and so from then on it became like okay I know how to move in space this is what the kick slide looks like this is what uh, you know this is and what I started to do is I started to limit movements or positions from the start that put me in a bad position I realized that opening my toe and playing off my instep forced me to move, you know, to basically not, uh, to turn my shoulders that if I played toes forward, not only was I stronger off the ball, but I could kick and stay more square to the line of scrimmage. So when you stay more square then the defense alignment has equal opportunity to go either way. When you turn your shoulders, you open up the inside. So as the idea is, as you set back and you get into position to pass block, the longer I can stay square, the greater chance I have a victory. And the more I can keep my knees bent, keep posture in position, you know, stay strong in my trunk. All of these things just hit me like a ton of bricks. And so much so, um, you know, when I started training camp, I was the four string left tackle. And by, you know, within two weeks, I was the starting left guard, you know, and it started at right tackle for the most of the preseason. And that was what allowed me to play 10 years in the NFL was this idea of toes forward, mm -hmm. challenge a posture and position. And um, a big issue that I ran into because my knee was fucked up and I was sitting there watching film. You know, all of a sudden I have this epiphany, this realization of challenging posture and position and the guy that can maintain theirs longer through space. But the problem was I couldn't play football. How was I going to practice this? I couldn't. I couldn't go out on the field. So the only place I had to, pa uh, I was able to practice this was in the weight room. Mm -hmm. So when I went in and I deadlifted and we pulled trap bar and squat and whatever, I was so focused on okay, hey, what does the bar position look like that teaches me this athletic position? What do my toes forward look like? What does it look like? What does the squat look like? And at the time, we didn't have video, so we would have you know cell phone cameras and we would just take pictures. Shit, I wish I have all those flip phone, but those things are long dead. But we would take pictures and um, you know try to say, hey, you know, this is where it's good. This is what the knees look like. You know, knees tracking over the insteps. They weren't getting it done. A tibial torsion. I wasn't getting dynamic movement in and out. What does my upper body look like? Am I able to maintain position? And then putting training accessory movements in place that allow me to strengthen that posture and position, like the dead bug, the movement. Mm -hmm. And then this well, this translated even farther. When all of a sudden my knee wasn't coming up and I got uh, plugged in with Charlie Francis and the idea of like the transfer of, of power and speed and developing speed in the weight room by basically making yourself rigid 
And all of these pieces seem to like kind of like come together, you know, almost like Iron Man, you know, pulling a suit together. All of these pieces and all of a sudden the training picked up when the EMS device came on. And next thing I know, I was out there running and playing. And that year of reflection and being able to observe from the outside and analyze, I really believe set the foundation for what I was able to do for the other next nine years. I'm going back. I'm a little great train and I'm right on track. I'm 